Assalamualaikum, I am Widi Mutakin, founder of Expo Studio, Expo Academy, and also Edu Talenta. In this tutorial video, I want to discuss my preferred method of modeling a window in Blender. To save time, I have made this wall of record. I am using a common wall size in Indonesia, which is 15 cm thick and 3 meters high. As usual, I prefer to use the length setting in centimeters. And for the snap settings, I am using the closest option and then vertex as the target. I should also mention that this tutorial is not for beginners. I will go through this tutorial a bit faster than usual, assuming that you already know the basics of 3D modeling and using materials in Blender. To make it more challenging, we want to make the window 1 meter or 100 centimeters from the left end, and then the width itself is 2 meters. Now, if in the previous door tutorial I used the loop cut and slide command, in this video I want to explore a different method, which is to use duplicate edges or faces. But for this method to work, the auto merge option must be active, and also these two options must be active as well. If so, press Shift D, then X, then 100, then Enter, then Shift D again, X, then 200, then Enter. The drawback of this method is that it will create interior faces. We can easily remove all interior faces by selecting them first. Use the Select All By Trade option, then select Interior Faces, then press X, and choose Faces. Our 3D model is now clean. Before we continue, if you don't need it anymore, make sure you turn off the auto merge option. Otherwise, all vertices that are in the same location will immediately be merged into one vertex. Next, for the horizontal lines, we can use the usual loop cut and slide method. Let's make two loop cuts. Then select the bottom edge loop. Set this one to be at 50 centimeters. And then set the edge loop on the top to be at 210 centimeters. Okay. Next, to create the hole, we can go to face mode, select these two faces, which are back to back, then right click, and select the bridge faces command. To create the window frame, it just so happens that the faces in the whole area are already selected, so we can just press shift D to duplicate, and then right click to cancel the move mode, press P, and choose selection to separate it into a new object. We can go to object mode and select the new object, then go to face mode, press A to select everything, then press Alt E to open the extrude pop-up window. What we want to use now is the extrude faces along normals command, type 4, then enter. To keep the thickness even, don't forget to enable the offset even option. So now we have a frame with a thickness of 4 centimeters. Alright? Now, to make this tutorial even more challenging, we want to divide the window into three parts. We make the left and right windows live or can be opened, while the middle one is fixed. To create the frame column, we can just select the face on the side, Shift D and X, then press E and 4 to extrude for a centimeter stick. Select all the faces with Ctrl L. Then, to distribute this column uniformly, I have discussed the technique in the previous video. So, if you are confused, please just open that video first. We divide the value by 3. Then press Shift R to repeat the last command. We can select this sunken column, press Ctrl L, then we just delete it because we don't need it anymore. And this is the result so far. The frame has been divided into three uniform areas. Next, let's create the glass in the center area. Select this edge and this edge. Press F to create a new face. Select the face and press P to separate it into another object. Select the object. Then we extrude this face by 1 cm. Next, select the face at the back as well. Then press I and 1 to inset by 1 cm. The function of the faces on the edge of the glass is to apply a black rubber material later. Yes, this depends on the window product we are using. If the product does not have a rubber seal, 
then feel free to skip this process. Next, we can position the origin point so that it is in the center of the object. After that, move and align the glass with the front surface of the window. Then press G, Y, and 1 to move it back by 1 cm. Before we continue, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, don't forget to subscribe first so you don't miss other useful tutorials in the future, inshallah. The center window is done. Now we can focus on making the live windows or ones with sashes. As before, we can start with selecting the two edges in front. Press F, then separate the face into a new object. Now we can edit this new object. Press I and 6 to insert the face by 6 cm. We don't want to delete the face in the middle, but we press P to separate it. We will use this leader for the glass. Next, select all the faces of the sash object. Then extrude as far as minus 3 cm. Usually, if we extrude with a minus value, the normals will be flipped. So press A. Then shift N to ensure all normals are facing outwards. If you are done, you can select and edit the glass object. Extrude the face by minus 1. Then, as before, we select the front and back faces. Then we press I and 1 to insert it by 1 cm. So now we have faces on the edge for the rubber or seal material. Because we extrude with a minus value, we need to press A and Shift N to fix the normal direction. Position the origin point so that it is in the center of the object. Press G, Y, and 1 to move it back 1 cm. I forgot to set the origin of the sash object to be centered as well. Okay. For the window on the right, since it is exactly the same size, we'll just duplicate it from the one on the left. Use Alt D to make it an instance. Press X, then snap it to the vertex in the right corner. As a final touch, we can add a bevel modifier. Two millimeter is enough so that the corners of the frame do not look too sharp. We also should add bevel modifiers to the sash objects as well. But instead of applying it one by one, we can just select all the sash objects and then select the frame object last. Press Ctrl L, then select Copy Modifiers. So now all the corners on the sashes are less sharp and look more realistic. Before we apply the texture, we need to set the UV mapping first. Actually, in our case, only the wall object needs a UV map because I plan to use only solid colors for the window objects without any texture images. But I want to show you that in Blender, we can apply UV maps to multiple objects at once. The trick is, first, we select everything by pressing A. Then go to face mode. Then press A again to select all faces belonging to all of the objects. The right window parts are not selected because they are instances that are already represented by the ones on the left. So this condition is correct. Next, open the UV menu and then use the Q projection method so that the texture is projected from six different directions. Let's set the texture size to two meters. Please note that this is not 2000, but 2.000. For some reason, this field is still using the main metric system and refuses to use the centimeters length setting. Again, this will make one texture tile size to be exactly 2 meters. So, it is a quick way to add Q projection to multiple objects at once. Alright? Once all the objects have proper UV maps, we can start applying the materials. After I create a material and like how it looks, I usually save it in the asset browser. This way, I can easily reuse the material in the future. If I need to make changes, Blender makes it easy also to revise and update the materials that exist in the asset browser. Now, for the rubber material, since the rubber and glass are one object, we need to create two separate material slots. We put the rubber black material into the second slot. Then, in face mode, 
make sure that only the faces on the borders are selected. Then, in the second slot, we click the Assign button. The same process also applies to the right and left glasses. Select the faces on the border. Create a new material slot. We can click the Assign button first, no problem. After that, we can choose the material, which is rubber black. Alhamdulillah, it is done. This is how it would look if you use the rendered viewport mode. You should note that this viewport is rendered directly by cycles. I am only using an RTX 3070, which is quite old. But even with this, I am able to see a path tracing result at almost real-time speed. This is very very helpful for me, especially when it comes to designing materials for architectural or interior design. If you want to learn 3D in more detail or other computer graphics software, don't forget to check out my courses on Udemy and Skillshare. The links are in the description below. Thank you for watching. Wassalamualaikum.